Previously on UA Next Chapter, the band goes through some challenges on their road to recording another album. They live in the unknown of having the songs but not having the lead singer. Since they had nowhere else to practice with live drums, they set up a practice spot in the RV, but the RV was too cold, so they eventually moved into Jeff's room. While their hunt for a lead singer continued, they realized they also needed an electric guitarist. So after a round of auditions, they added Brian Joy to the band. Well, on a trial period. To accommodate Burley's live drums, they built a drum room inside of Jeff's room. Despite all their efforts, they still did not have a lead singer to actually sing their songs. Can this team come together in time? Do they have what it takes to get everything ready for Nashville in order to finish recording an entire album? With recording around the corner, who are they going to find to be their new lead singer? Find out now on this episode of UA, Next Chapter, The Album Journey. I don't know, I mean, he's my brother at all, but... I think everyone just looked around at each other. I was probably the most that was against it. It really just got to a point where I was like, my, my logic behind it was, a singer is better than no singer at all. He's been a pad player all these years, and so... Synth player. <laughs> Synth player, sorry. And everyone had a billion thoughts running through their mind. You know, the story in the Bible where uh, God uses a donkey, and everybody always has like, you know, if God can use a donkey, God can use anybody. So I was like, Man, if God can make a donkey talk, he can make me sing. Everyone in the band was taken aback. This was the same guy that, when introducing new songs to the band, had to take Sean to a separate room and whisper sing the melody so that Sean could show it to the rest of the band. Uh, we don't have any other options, so I was like, all right, you know, just, let's try it. See what he's been whispering to Sean all these years. Next on the list was marketing. And with marketing comes band pictures. So they did what any band of boys would do when planning to get ready for a photo shoot. They begged and pleaded for guidance from their trusted female friends to help them with their image. Sharon and Dana answered the call. They took them shopping and may or may not have even applied makeup to one or more of the band members. Brian's fitting in really well. He's really creative, so... Um... It's awesome because he pushes us musically. Barley's eating barley. Hey, he's he's like a big giant baby kitty cat that's just like ready to pounce at anything and everything. <laughs> it's like having a little baby in the band. I think I'm doing okay. Meanwhile, even before Jeff stepped into the role of lead singer for the Up After, he was leading the musicians at church, playing at coffee shops, and at various open mic places. In fact, his girlfriend Dana would form a duet of sorts at most of these open mic gigs as well. There was one such open mic night that would be a little bit more special than the others. So, um, this girl to the left of me, um, <laughs> all right, she's crying already. <laughs> Jeff becomes the new lead singer. He gets engaged. Now what? Well, Jeff has a suggestion. Hey guys, I think Dana should join the band. Nothing else would do it. This would kill the band. That's what I was thinking. Totally kidding. Love that girl. Um, she's pretty awesome and super easy to get along with, so I was actually pretty excited about it. I was really, really excited, uh, but then I got myself together. You have to work together on such a close level for an extended period of time, so I get really picky on who's in the band. So the band added another member to the trial period list. I'm not Indian. I was born in Honduras. I graduated as an interior designer. I'm currently in school for my bachelor's um, in education. I work in the medical field, I'm kind of all over the place, but I do enjoy learning new things. But wherever God takes me, I'm down. 
Dana started coming to practices and working on synth and harmony parts. I remember that our room initially, like, it always smells like sweat. Now when Dana came in the band, it was just a completely different dynamic because, I don't know, like, it just smelled like waterfalls and cherry blossoms and... <laughs> Everything seemed to be coming together for them as a band. They found out that Josh and another producer, Jared Fox, would be able to open up a slot for the band to record the album. But then about three days later, he emailed us and was like, next slot available is in three weeks. Love you, Josh, but uh, that was kind of soon. The band took the opportunity and went crazy for the next few weeks practicing. Everything was focused on getting it all down for the recording. Before they knew it, they were in Nashville. I'm in Nashville, and it's gonna happen. It was definitely, yes, we're here, we don't have to drive. And it was really exciting. <laughs> but it was an especially big deal for Brian. <laughs> Josh Silverberg was a part of a band uh, called Edison Glass, and when I started playing guitar, that was one of the biggest influences in my life. Um, one of the biggest bands for me and for my friends, we, we would listen to that band on and repeat nonstop for hours on end memorizing every nuance of every song. Um, so to get the opportunity to work with someone who's influenced my playing so much was just like pretty unreal. Finally, at Red Red Studio, they got started right away. I just want to get it done. This is really exciting. How you feel, bro, man? Because I know he's been working really hard. That's all I can do. And it's time yeah, to lay it out. Give him praise, give him praise. It was a grueling but satisfying week for everyone and producer Josh even fell in love with Brian's guitar. Josh mentioned that he wanted to buy the same guitar as mine and Burley suggested that uh, we should uh, pick one up just like it and we should buy it for him as a gift. They ended up buying the same exact guitar, brought it back to their hotel room and then Brian made a suggestion. I, I kind of suggested that I should get my guitar. I was not expecting that. Everyone were kind of just like, oh, well, it was kind of a touchy topic. It was weird because they didn't want to be like, yes, and then force me to give my guitar. Brian, that's a, that's a big step. That's like your baby. Um, but then they also felt like that was the right thing to do and that was a solid thing to do. So they ended up giving Josh Brian's guitar. Now with their album recorded, the band sits in eager anticipation to receive their first mixes back from Josh and Jared. <laughs> will they like what they get? How will the new band sound live? Will Dana fit into the band? What about Brian? Jeff's girlfriend made it quicker than I did. I've been in the band for a year. <laughs> Keep it locked here to find out on UA, next chapter, the album journey.